Alright, it's November 8th. Uh, what's going on with this particular car is uh, it has an oil consumption problem. And um, what the owner has done, they've already tried changing the oil with no avail. Uh, they put a heavier viscosity in there and it still continues to consume oil. Uh, when I got the diagnosing this and just checking things out, just the basic test, I uh, pulled the PCV system off. This is the first thing I went for. And uh, there was a lot of smoke coming out of here. And if you work on a service engine or anything, you know there's a lot of smoke coming from the PCV system. Uh, there's issues with the piston rings or discrepancies or clearance issues in the, in the uh, combustion chamber. Mainly the piston rings. Could be the cylinder walls, but mainly the piston rings. If the piston rings are... Uh, the oil is neglected, the sludge build up in the piston rings, they get tight and they don't expand. When the engine warms up and the metal expands, you're going to have oil consumption problems. One of the common vehicles, were, which is very known, is the 2A ZFEs. Those were notorious for consuming oil. Uh, even though it would be no oil leaks on there, it would just eat it. Simply because of the rings are being bad. And usually when I pull those motors out to re when they put new rings in there, they're collapsed, they're fixed, and they're just basically um, the the they they don't have any spring to them, and they're 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 meshed with the actual ring uh, the ring lands like they're they're collapsed in with the piston, so they, there's nothing pushing out. It's just tight on the piston, like the rings are smashed. Anyway, so with this one. It's likely going to be the piston rings, uh, and um, we're going to try some things to see if we can resolve this. One thing that I think that would be fixed is the smoke. That would be a good indication that we freed up those freed up those rings. So we have two things I'm going to do, and I'm going to mention those in a little bit. Um, well, two things we're going to do to try to remedy this issue, which is non-invasive, meaning that we're not going to go inside and replace these piston rings. But we are going to check the compression. We're also going to check the spark plugs. I have my inspection camera so we can take a look inside the cylinders here and uh, see what those look like before and after. So I'm not going to sit here and talk too much, but I, like, I do like to provide a lot of information. Um, this is more of the cheaper alternative than spending three thousand plus dollars and putting a motor in here or rebuilding it. So we're going to we're going to do this number here. Uh, which is like a fraction of the cost and see what happens. I told him it was a 60% chance it's not going to work, but we're going to try it anyway, and I'm going to try my own method. Everybody got their own. One thing I did see on Identifix, they state what you can do, and this is some on some other vehicles, you can pour transmission fluid in the cylinders, let it soak, soak for a while. Transmission fluid honestly don't work, and I've done my own personal test with sludge and um, transmission fluid. It just don't work that well. I be just to be straight up. So we're going to use my favorite uh, additive, and um, I'm going to show you that. But before I do, let's take the plug. I'm going to start up. You're going to see all the smoke that comes out, and then we'll uh, go from there. I'm not going to worry about being very specific when it comes to the compression test, like testing it cold versus hot, uh, because the, my primary indicator is the blow by that come out that PCV system here. So let's uh, start up and uh, look at the blow by and uh, let me show you the oil quality. This is this is what the oil looks like. I mean, it's neglected. They didn't keep the oil changed in there. So I'm pretty sure if I was to take the valve cover off, it's probably not going to look real pretty in there. So let's start it up um, and see what that's see what's going on with the smoke. Now it does have an exhaust leak. You see some of the smoke coming out right there. It's come out the flex pipe. It gets pretty bad. There's also in front of the motor. Right, after a while letting it run, uh, I had to, and there was quite a bit of smoke in there. Let me show you the smoke coming from the PCV. Stabilized. So we can see the smoke coming from there. And that's uh, after it warmed up a little bit. Whew. 
again, I'm not saying it's going to fix it, but we don't know. I don't know. Let me show you the codes that came up. This is... Oh, shoot. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? This is the only code that came up. Sometimes uh, it's a P1148, which is a closed loop uh, bank one. I, I assume that's probably like O2 sensor related. Um, I, I don't know. Didn't really look up anything. If it, It's not related to the uh, smoking or anything misfire related. Sometimes what could happen on these vehicles, from what I understand, uh, this is what the this is what some of the case study states. The catalytic converter can become defective. Chunks can get inside the cylinder and cause some issues. I'm gonna blame it on uh, back pressure. Never seen that happen before, but I'm not saying it can't. All right, so we saw the smoke, and uh, we're, we're we're trying to eliminate this. When I'm gonna pull, we're gonna pull the plugs out, and then maybe we can see if the uh, plug condition can provide us with the story about how is that individual cylinder is running, and we can pretty much go from there as far as paying more closer attention to whichever cylinder. It's probably what happened. Um, they put oil, spilled it in there, and that's why that one got wet. So that's probably that'll explain this cylinder. I want to try to get that oil out of number one because that's going to skew my readings when I pull the plug out. So let me suction that out, and we'll go from there. Vacuum pump and broke, so here we are. Probably try changing the plug first. So number one is smoking. Cylinder is. Here is our spark plug. The little wetness that's on there, I mean, that's likely from uh, the brake cleaner when I poured it in there to clean this out. It is fouled, so that is an indication that it's, it's uh, not running efficiently. Ideally, you want to see a white, I want to say like a mild white soot, the tan color, like a reddish tint. We don't have that, but it's black. Black means fouled.
What in the world? Slang do a good job of running these out. Same thing. This one's fouled. It's not bad. I mean, the, the ground isn't fouled out. The ground here, the top, the white part, that's not fouled out a whole lot. So I'll take three. This is fouled more. The difference you'll see when a vehicle is consuming oil in the combustion process, like through the pistons, is going to be different from when you see them consuming oil pre uh, pre intake, like you know, through the PCV system. That's what I mean. So. This one definitely has oil inside of this plug here, and it's deep in there, so it's a good indication that this lightly, number four, number four and number one. So if you look inside of the well there, it's, that's one, but again, that fluid was from me. This isn't from me, and that's that's in there. So likely, uh, four is going to be a bigger problem than uh, all the other ones here. So we'll look in four and one, and probably and it, I'll prioritize the images on the camera here what we look at, but. This one likely is going to be our problem, child. So let's take a look inside of the cylinder. All right, this is going to be a little bootleg. Let's see if we can go down inside of cylinder four here. Take a look inside of there. Not sure how well detailed y'all are able to see it, but. That's right, ever between the piston wall and the piston itself. So let's go on to number one. Looks similar. This is cylinder one. This is smoking. And it could be because of the intake valve being open on number one, and it's probably the. Uh, the smoke that's inside of the PCV going to the intake could be uh, going through or accumulating inside of the plenum getting inside of there so it could be that but either way uh, we're gonna uh oh where we're at this is this is number two there's a lot of oil in there that has a lot of oil. It might not be as detailed on the camera from what y'all seeing, but that's there's a lot of oil in number number two. Here's number three. Number three also has a pool of oil in there and it's smoking. So all of them, all of them are smoking. Uh, so we're gonna do this test with all of them. And um hopefully we can hopefully we can fix it. Some would probably recommend putting sea foam in there. I mean it's a possibility that it probably has oil inside of the plenum there and it's eating the oil, but you know, I remove this breather here that goes directly into the plenum there. So you know, it shouldn't be smoking that bad, but it's probably some residual. Right, so the plan is to use transmission fluid, brake cleaner, and uh, paint thinner over there. Uh, so what I'm going to do 
I'm going to drain all the engine oil. I have about four quarts of uh, transmission fluid. I prefer to use like import fluid, but this is what I have. I bought that on like sale at O'Reilly, so I'd rather have something with a friction modifier in it. But this is what I got. So drain the engine oil, pour the transmission fluid in there, fill that up, what, four or five quarts. Let it run for an hour. I'm going to let it sit in a resting spot, pull the plugs out, pour lacquer thinner in the cylinders as a filler, and um, probably like a one to three ratio with brake cleaner inside the uh, chamber, and just let it sit. So what I'm expecting to happen is the brake cleaner to break down the sludge buildup on the rings, and it works excellent when I tell you brake cleaner works excellent. I don't know what it is about brake cleaner, but it just completely dissolves sludge. You let the sludge sit, it's gone like in a couple hours. It's crazy. But I'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours. And theory, my theory is like there's an end gap within the uh, ring end gap that sludge should be able to seep through and work its way down inside the ring lands, inside the uh, oil rings, and just coat that and at some point it'll break that sludge down and, and free those sticking rings so like I said earlier those piston rings when they have we have oil consumption problem they're they're stuck and when they're stuck they don't expand out to seal the, the cylinder walls so this is what I'm gonna use I haven't had any issues with brake cleaner eating up metals or anything it's literally sitting in a metal can so nothing's gonna happen it's not gonna eat anything no chemical reaction is gonna it's nothing's gonna happen so once I let that sit for several days I'm gonna drain the fluid inside the cylinder um, start it up with the transmission fluid probably let it run for a while and drain it and replace it with fresh oil so that's the plan so I'm gonna let it run with the transmission fluid pull the plugs uh, fill it up with fill the cylinder with paint thinner and brake cleaner and let it sit. So I'm gonna get it somewhere where it's gonna be stationary and not moving. And um, we'll see what happened in a few days. So I got the oil drain. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the transmission fluid in there. Alright, it's four quarts. Let's see what we're looking like. So that's filled up. Um, I didn't do the compression test. We're going to do that right now. I know it wouldn't make sense because we do have the improper viscosity in there, but that shouldn't matter uh, for what we got going on. So. Start off with cylinder one. Here's cylinder one, got pretty decent compression. That's 160, so that's pretty good. The engine sounds real strong when you turn it over. It's not like me, I didn't hear any drop-offs in the cylinder pressure. 
I mean, just going from off, going off of experience. But that don't mean anything. So, so it was cylinder two. Cylinder two, making about the same, uh, about I'll say 170 almost, 167 or so. Oh, the battery a little low. Hope I can get this knocked out before the battery starts to get low. Get too low. So the four cylinder four was a suspected issue. So here's cylinder three. Yep, all about the same. See what four is doing. The oil leaks that the engine does have shouldn't cause the car to lose a crap ton of oil. Let's see what we got on cylinder four. That's a little tad lower. Nothing crazy. So all of them are around about 167, right under 170. So we're gonna um so we have something to compare it to. I did clean the plugs on the wire wheel, so I don't know which one was what. So we got a fresh start. I took some brake cleaner, went inside the uh, the plug well there, got those cleaned out so there's no oil. So we kind of got a fresh start. And looking at these plugs, they were replaced before. You know, you don't see any compression seeping through the porcelain here. A lot of times that's a good indication of the age of the plugs. Zip those in there. Especially being loose. Somebody even put them in there. Knuckle busters. You don't have to put the coils back where they originally came from. I don't know why people say that. Uh, these are mixed up. Doesn't matter. The car doesn't remember how to combust on each cylinder. It's just the craziest thing I've heard. Where's that last coil? We're gonna start up with the transmission fluid in there and see what it sounds like. <laughs> Still smoking a little bit, let it do its thing. Smell like transmission fluid now. It don't smell like engine oil. The smoke don't. All right, I'm gonna let it run for a while, and uh, we'll be back. All right, car's been running for about 40 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. lost like my footage of me pulling the plugs out but two 
plugs are to remove four and three are wet oh man it's hot three what is this no this is four and three two is dry and then one one is a little dry that was in there must have evaporated a lot better to put in there in the coal engine but I had a bright idea to put it in a hot engine all right so I'm gonna let that sit there and soak come back and check it make sure it hasn't evaporated and if so I'll just add some more in there and uh, we'll just let this sit for a few days so one cool thing I noticed when I was doing this uh, I had put the ignition coils back in there to prevent the fumes from escaping and losing the chemical inside the combustion chamber. And one of the things I noticed, there was smoke coming from the PCV. It's, it's minuscule, but you can see it. So what it is, I'm like, well, you can use this to narrow down with cylinders causing the smoke or the pressure loss. So once I remove the coils, the cylinder that had the pressure build up it was actually that I actually stopped the uh, the flow of blow by so what's uh, I said chemical it was still in the forward it's causing you can do a leak down test too don't get me wrong but it was just something I had noticed when I had did this so a leak down test would definitely suffice but I I didn't feel like doing all that I just really went ahead and did a compression test one of my biggest concerns with this is the possibility of a piston being broken Hopefully that cylinder four will uh, the rings will loosen up like they're supposed to and things will start working appropriately But uh, I guess the substance to take from this a compression leak down test would have definitely helped um, I didn't do that uh, But the compression test did provide one result when a leak down test or a smoke test would have provide definitely another So I'll see you in a few days